to either start on either side and tell me what we're looking at here because there's a lot of moving parts here. There's a lot of stuff and things in here. This is crazy because we like we were in, we were in something so simple and clean, so simple and now there's all this. So simple, it really all is. Right. It seems more complicated. It's not. It's not. <laughs> oh, what's going on, guys? Uh, what up? <laughs> I'm with I'm with Jay here from Off Grid Solutions, PDX. John is one of his coworkers, uh, and they built this just a beast of a it's, machine it's quite a machine um we're gonna go we're gonna get into all of it right now we're gonna get into you did everything on this you were you're the total upfitter on that yeah he he brought it in he had started uh Oof. upfitting it a little bit and had a bunch of packages and stuff and yeah we're gonna get into all that we're gonna get this ugly mug off and we're gonna get that ugly mug on hey hey <laughs> uh, we're actually good friends so it's okay what's up buddy what's going on man you get your shop behind you yeah Got it kind of cleaned up right now. Sort of, sort of looking good. It's, it's almost empty. Is it? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, you have other vans over here. Yeah, other vans yeah you've got other vans right. you guys are working on. Waiting um, on some parts and things. You just, you, going you know, you're just chilling with your Ducati behind you. It's not a big deal. It's for sale. <laughs> awesome ambulance uh, that I can't wait to see done. You're about what we're percentage? Getting, we're getting pretty close on that. I would say 75 percent. Now is a lot of the finished stuff and how we're going to actually attach some of the wall panels and to make it look as good as I want it to look. Of course. That's been it's a kind of the finished stuff has been way different than the vans. I, you kind of have a, a way to finish the vans, and yeah. then this thing's been throwing a lot of different curveballs at us. And fun, <laughs> fun curveballs, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun curveballs. We're figuring yeah, it learning out. Experience. It's definitely looking yeah. pretty good in there. And it's good. I'm really, I'm, I'm excited to see that it's looking good so far, man. I'm really loving it. Let's talk about this, this guy right here, which is what I'm actually most intrigued about. You did the full build. We did. Are you doing that anymore? Uh, not so much doing full builds anymore. Okay. I'm really sticking to helping the DIYers do their base systems that are difficult, you know, plumbing, the heating, electrical, specialize a lot of the solar, and obviously we do a lot of the ride improvement stuff with Van Compass as well, so. All right, so before we get into more Van stuff, how can we get a hold of you? How can customers get a hold of you? How can people get a hold of you? Through email is the best way of kind of, we do consultations now the, with the way the market is. Uh, there's just so many people building vans. We kind of set up consultations and credit that towards the, the price of the, the build or whatever you choose to, to get with us, but really help lay out a system that works for you and not just say, hey, I need a power system. Well, what are you going to be doing with it? And spend some time kind of figuring out what, what everyone actually needs, not just say, hey, this is going to work for everyone. Right, so you're educating. Out. Yeah, and then just making sure people aren't overbuying or underbuying, right? Yeah, because, like, of course. If you're gonna get out there and then find out that you don't have enough power, that's not gonna be fun either. So it's just no. kind of a fitting power needs with budget. Excited to see your just your company grow over time. Off Grid Solutions PDX at gmail.com, I believe. That's right. Also off grid solutions pdx.com. Right, that's the website. That's the website. And your Instagram is also off grid solutions pdx. That's it. Keep it simple. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's, it started obviously completely bone stock. We went with the Van Compass stage six lift, I believe. That's what it is, stage four, stage six, I'm gonna work that up now. But, uh, it's <laughs> One a, of those. It's, it's a two inch with the Fox shocks in the front. It actually adds an external secondary Fox shock. So the whole mounting system. So this is actually the factory strut that would have been in there. Why does somebody do that? Like, why, like I know that your client, Johan, put a ton of work to the outside of the van. Mm -hmm. Why would somebody put these shocks specifically, or any shocks really? What these things really, really do is control like the sway of the van because of where they're hooked to the bottom of the A-arm. The other thing they really do is if you're going over washboards, they really control the, how quick the tire can move so it doesn't feel as gnarly when you're going over washboards. Nice. It really smooths the whole ride out. Even going over the railroad tracks, yep. when in your van you feel it go like this, yep. this one just goes right it's totally different so that's really is like a ride improvement package totally it really is okay it's awesome and that's what they use as the fox shots and you are i guess an upfitter not an upfitter but van, like your van Compass dealer, yeah. van Compass dealer yes and installer and installer okay cool and in the back they do the same sort of thing except they give you external reservoirs that are adjustable so again if you're going to be going down some gnarly roads and you know you're going to be doing it you can loosen the things up and let them kind of move around a little bit but when you get back on the highway tighten them back down and it rides nice and solid while you're getting there. Did you add any leafs? Uh, the leaf pack underneath of it. So pretty much these two leafs, these two these two are factory and these two or three are added. So you did add some. Yep, and every every van is different. We weigh the van, we send that to Mark at Van Compass and he determines what it's going to need based upon what the van weighs. We can go from there. Yeah, I actually emailed him because I was gonna do it to my van and that very first thing he said was, 
Dude, go wear your van. Go away. Yeah, go away, it, man. It, it really helps. Like that's what we're setting these things up to do. The the leaf springs over time, about thirty five thousand miles or so, really start to show, because there's only two of them in there. So right. Wait in there and leaving it in there all the time, it kind of just kind of start sinking it's funny though because when we get into the build we'll kind of talk about that you didn't add that much weight into this beast not a lot but we did add a lot of water so the water okay. is our biggest our biggest weight but everything that we've used is aluminum and tried to be lightweight so we really even where we're at now we're we're still i think it's 7800 pounds fully loaded with fuel and water 7800 7, pounds. pounds with a big four-wheel drive big tires and these can handle 89 i believe so it's you're 88, 88 so you're good you're beyond good you're a thousand under. Fifty-five gallons of water is what this thing holds. So. Fifty-five got, gallons of water. We got like water. twenty-four gallons of uh, gasoline or uh, diesel. Two diesel, yeah. Yeah, this is a four by four. I don't know if we mentioned that, right? Uh, say two thousand eighteen four by four. Two thousand eighteen's got seven thousand, a little over seven thousand miles on it. That's insane. It's gonna be a sweet. Rig. It's insane. This thing is an off-road machine. You taking it to the beach, I believe. I took it to the beach just for a couple pictures. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. Epic, yeah. yeah it's, it's, a, it's an awesome ride. I was really impressed with uh, even going over like the mountain passes and stuff over the beach, what this thing does. like With the suspension stuff, I was really impressed. I don't think I've installed one suspension kit for anyone that wasn't blown away by the time they made it to the gate. Yeah, this is a for whole sure. Rig. Like, shit, why did I wait so long? That's, that's what I get. I hear all the time. Why did I wait so long? Yeah. We love the before and after reactions. <laughs> we usually take the first uh, maiden voyage with the customer. I just love to that. See it. What do you got for uh, solar on the roof? Uh, Solaria 360, so a 360 watt single panel. Just a single 360. Wow. Using the Hain brackets, which are, we use all the bracketry that we can to go to the factory roof rails on all the sprinters. So we've got a panel that works well with his brackets. And these brackets will also accommodate an awning if I ever wanted to add one later. There is no awning there, obviously, but if you just said, like you just said, if somebody wanted to add one, Johan wants can. to add one, yep. you can. It's very easy. 144 wheelbase, so the 360 fits up there nicely. Do you even have a ceiling fan in there? Yep. Oh, you do? It's just so tall that you have to go back a little bit further. Oh, there it is. Holy Christmas, yeah. It, it's a big van. Okay. It is up there. Uh, let's step in. You want to step in? And then we're going to move to the back after we do a little tour in the inside. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't forgot that was even there. I'm not gonna hop into it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I mean, that step just pulled out, man. Oh, I noticed this little guy, I recognize this guy. You're an installer for them. Everyone knows that guy. Well, everybody that watches my videos. <laughs> you have radiant floor heating in this thing. Yeah, it's gonna be a four season camper, so he wanted to be able to go wherever he wanted, whenever he wanted, and not worry about getting cold. Oh, man, four season camper. Yeah, so this is a four by four. It can handle pretty much everything you've done. A People are gonna see this and be like, oh, it's so like minimalist and clean, but there's way more to this than what we see right now. Try to keep it, the looks of it simple. There was a little update. There was one change in the wall panels. They actually used to be white. And when we updated oh, yeah. everything else, we kind of were going for a little bit different feel, but he still wanted to keep it simple. That was kind of their whole goal with the with the walls and everything, just keep it simple. And this hasn't been lived in yet? No. This, has, uh, this has not even left your shop, really. He's, we're getting ready to deliver it, yep. Okay, all right, let's start in the front. And you have a shelf that you installed here that I'm holding onto while I'm leaning back. It's the RB component shelf. I saw it's the lower one. I love this shelf, by the way. And we went ahead and built a little head protection there. About took myself out, so I built a little panel and padded it. Did you hit your head? Yes, I've cracked my head really good. On. I, I wear a hat a lot, okay? Yeah. And if it's down like that and I'm moving, I, I it hit me right here, and I was just like, it, okay, it'll I, just lay I, me out. I do have the same shelf of mine, and I will admit, I've definitely knocked my head quite a few times. <laughs> so I tried to, and it was a nice touch to, to not have this big black black strip. And then another little thing that I did is I painted this to kind of match to bring some of the black. Oh, cool! I like that. That's kind a good idea. It. We wrapped the headliner and everything, and. Did you do a stereo system to this? Stereo system, yep. We did a seven inch touchscreen Pioneer. So all, all of the stuff that we tried to do is CarPlay. We're able to, if it has steering controls, utilize steering controls, utilize the factory USB port, pretty much not decontent the vehicle at all. What's funny is I, I, you know, I'm so used to seeing my screen, which is the 2019. Mm -hmm. The 2018s don't have that. So that's when I turned around, I saw it. I was like, whoa, why, why do you have a screen up there? So I didn't realize you put that in. Awesome. We already talked about the Van Life Tech heated floor system. Uh, you are gonna send me a picture of the heat on, I believe, right? Yeah, I, I have a little FLIR. So like uh, along the way, sometimes for even installing power systems, I can see resistance before it becomes an issue. And the yeah. same thing, took a picture of the floor just to see where the tube went and heat disbursement. It's actually a pretty cool picture. So I'll definitely send that to you. Or do you wanna go into anything up, up here, your switches at all? Um, I mean, everything's pretty simple. We just went with our standard Kotec. Uh, inverted. This is really kind of a cool thing, though. So you say standard, but it's not standard. I know it's not standard. For, for everything that we do, we for you, yeah. 
It's <laughs> our part of our standard kit. So okay. This this is not though. This is pretty special. I really enjoy this. What is it? This is a lithionics battery monitor. So this has a 400 amp hour single lithionics battery in it. This guy right here. And that is the monitor for the battery. So the battery itself has a built-in shunt in it. It's monitoring everything. How many amp hours of battery? 400 single battery. Wait, what? Single battery. Who's who did that? Lithionics. Lithionics. Yeah. Has a one battery, 400 amp hours. It's a big battery. I'll show you. It's big. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, I'd love to see this thing. It's big, but this actually turns on and off that battery. Oh. So if you're gonna shut it down, I can shut the whole system down right here. Boom. Why? Why the one button? It's just it's just a feature that they have for a reset on top of their battery. If it ever um, low voltage or anything, you just kick it back on right here. You don't have to get to the battery. Right. right. The other thing that Lithionics has in their battery is a this has an aftermarket remote start. It has the ability to trigger the vehicle to start the vehicle to then charge that battery off the so second like, 280 amp alternator that we put in. So it's got a nation oh, you, second alternator. Oh, you have a second alternator. Right. So to have another one that can go 280, no problem, right. that battery will take it in. It's right. a 400 you know, amp hour pack. It really charges super fast and their shunt and their little program that they have, I've been really, really, really happy, happy with. Even built in monitoring as far as what temperature the battery is all the time on the little screen so, so i just want to quickly ask your second alternator charges faster if i did my math correctly than the solar panel on the roof yeah solar panel on the roof max is going to be putting out around 20 amps that's capable of 280. that's crazy yeah so that's very, that's very, very, very a good. lot more oh, actually and it, yeah a lot a lot <laughs> you more. can charge it super 30 to 45 minutes and you can charge your whole yeah much battery thing. yeah that's fast it's a lot of juice i mean it's it's the h is and, it hard to hook up um it takes some special tools and stuff to, to get so there's two separate kits if you use the nation's kit that that adds a second belt and doesn't use the factory belt yeah you do have to have a separate tool but it stays out of all the mercedes belts and pulleys and stuff like that but their bracketry and their installs and stuff are really nice nation makes some really good brackets i kind of want to just say on camera me not on camera you can hear me is the reason jason is saying this kind of stuff is because you you build power kits you do all sort all things power i've spent the last probably about 14 bro. years <laughs> doing uh started with car audio so we did a lot of high amperage stuff from got, there got it and then um you worked for a, for a van a van up outfitter for a thank you for not yeah. saying who it was <laughs> so i worked for them for a few years and learned a lot but also wanted to change some things and, okay and i found the need of again just being here for people who just need small things done right people customers would come in like hey i just need a fan or hey i just need this i need a solar panel and it was nope 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 all we do is full build so it's like okay well there might be a need for someone to kind of help these people out just do a couple things along the way didn't really think i was going to end up doing a full build well, you know but this is this will be our third one i think that we've we've done so it's came out beautifully so far let's see your galley dude because uh the galley is remarkable talk about kind of all your entire framing not just the galley but the bed as well you used uh what exactly uh everything in the van is aluminum framing uh tig welded here and then we sent send it to powder coat i guess you can't see some of it but that's that nifty. Shows, that shows more of the frame and stuff. This is our van life tech where we can get to adjust our hot water. And, and for like people that. that, like, that is the hot water holding tank. It's not actually plugged in to be a 120 volt mm -hmm. hot water tank. I do not need the inverter to run this program, that is for sure. Right, that's that's just a holding tank for hot water, everybody. Because I get that question a lot. They're yeah. like, oh, I just that's the same hot water tank? Yeah. Uh-huh. A lot of people see that and think that's what's going on, but not the case. Going back to the aluminum framing, you powder coated it white, like you said. It's all TIG welded up. It's beautiful. You have an in-house uh, welder. Yeah, and it's actually, it turned out to be very light as opposed to carcassing the whole thing out of, you know, wood. I mean, half inch works, but three quarters seems to work a lot better. And when you start adding three quarter sheets up, you're going to put a lot of weight into your van. And then you used a really, really, really nice bamboo ply. Did a half inch, half inch bamboo, rounded it over and urethaned it. So that way it would put up with some abuse. Um, that and this stuff is not cheap. So you spent, or the customer, I guess, spent a good amount of money on this. They wanted it to look nice. I mean, I mean it, it looks beautiful. I like it too, a lot. I started kind of like falling in love with the bamboo with the end grain and stuff. It it's looks like around cool. the corners. I really like. There you go. We can see, yeah, you can definitely see all that right there. That's awesome. And the really deep sink too. That's nice. This is a livable, you know, adventure, just kitted out van, I guess. Plenty of overhead storage, kind of like a his and her storage facilities. Um, I did a video with you a while back and I probably got a million and uh, two questions on this uh, upper storage cabinets, or yes. I guess what they are because they look very soft, they look great. What are they, dude? They're adventure wagon mule bags is what they're called. So they're made from a local company here in Portland. Pretty much 
this is going to fit Sprinter, but they fit other vans if you kind of work with them a little bit, okay. you know what I mean? But they only build this one profile, and it's mostly for Sprinter. But it does, you, you don't necessarily have to have full tracks. You can do Mac buttons, you know, okay. put them where you want them to do it. But uh, this is what it's meant to attach to. Six points, three on the top and three on the back. Pretty quick to remove, and the two sides kind of fold in, so they're like a harder harder plastic kind of and you can pull this whole panel out and then these things can fold up Actually, oh really flat you can fold these things flat and they come in i think duels they come in twos no these are just two separate ones but they, this is how they come just kind of like this one are they so is this is this all is this all one all unit one unit just from here to here oh from okay yeah so this is one and this is one so technically could you take this one and move it over there absolutely okay that's what i was trying to get at that's awesome so you could like i mean i don't know why anybody would do that yeah, keep your feet over here, your head over here, you know? Right, if you wanted to lean up and better or something like that. But again, it's just the option of doing something mm -hmm. like that. It's a cool idea if you want to put these tracks in, is what you're saying. Yeah, and the, the tracks are very usable for all kinds of different things. Because we have structure up here. You could hang a hammock or something from these ones if you wanted to. You could. It's, yeah. Yeah, these are bolted into the frame, I guess, well, right? We, ha we built infrastructure that goes in between all the ribs. And it's a big four inch plate of aluminum that these are tapped into. See, this is the thing. A lot of people don't understand the work that goes in. Like it looks so simple and clean, but people don't understand like they didn't know that aluminum was back there that you just yeah, talked you about. Would, you would never know, but I mean, you gotta have a way to attach that stuff. And, and actually these, the ribs going across are literally just like glued to the ceiling. So you can't just attach them or you, you know, in the heat, you're just gonna pull those things right off the, off the roof anyway. If you have enough weight on them, you correct. That's them, what yeah. you're saying? Yeah, that's a good point. So I've never actually spread them out and that's why we use big aluminum strips to go because I, I don't know the rib i guess you could see is right here yeah you can tell i'm here and here which my my holes are actually in the middle of them so you have to put something in between the ribs right? gotcha gotcha you're smart man two appliances that i absolutely adore uh you have this massive isotherm i think that's the 130 which is just huge can i open it yeah it's awesome that is just so huge it's i have the 85 and that thing is just trump's mine it's crazy and the other thing that they did is this behind me is their freezer oh they want to go for a while right right so they want a fridge freezer and they wanted more cold storage and stuff like that so and the beautiful thing about the freezer is you don't have to have it in here you don't have to have you it can in take here, that you out don't, you don't have to have it as a, a freezer i mean you could use that as a second fridge too you can do whatever you want with it so a uh, beer cooler you got food in one beer in another one what is this an alcohol oven alcohol so oven it's got two little sterno deals down below big alcohol discs essentially and give it a pump and turn it on and it runs off alcohol really where do you get alcohol um i guess from any of the boat stores this okay is dometic unit oh it is yep. oh okay and they make a there's a top that goes with it too that has two burners so we're working on kind of storing that as well i'm going to store it in here for them so on boats they actually make a gyro for this thing with the whole unit attached it it makes cookies like this for you oh really so wait the the top is not here it's not on no it's not the burners are not on there's two burners that he'll just set up here when he's cooking so it's a portable two burner it just comes apart it exactly. connects there's oh like wow a little piece that makes it so it can connect as one unit or come apart oh that's crazy you have what is this silver knob dude so this is the the mixer for the outdoor shower what this thing's set up for is there's a gray tank right underneath me right here that has the motorized ball valve and stuff in it oh i remember you doing one of those for somebody i yeah, know yeah i know a guy's got one of those <laughs> but he had a shower pan that he was going to have ordered that just kind of didn't show up with everything that's been going on right having an issue getting it um, but it's supposed to go right there and go through the floor and drain into the tank shower pops out of here pull that thing off that's where it's all stored and this is the the whole shower mixer hot cold for it so the gray tank that's underneath us right now or underneath me it's it's non-functional right now although i mean it's all wired up ready to yeah, go yeah and worst case i guess i could pipe just keep the sink pipe it over to it and that way he could at least store his gray water that way where does the sink drain through now this one's just straight to the ground, ground. Yeah, yeah there you go before i get to the really exciting water stuff uh in the back in the trunk oh, yeah. uh let's talk a little bit about the bed because the bed is an interesting design another thing that seems very simple but you kind of went into crazy jason mode here well he needed they needed more space right like when they're parked and stuff like that so it, not necessarily have to take the whole bed out but just to give more a little more standing space so we just essentially built a little a little bed where the center could come out so there's these two square panels in here that float into the track so, so each one of those is separate each one of these is separate too so i only have to remove one of them you don't have to remove the whole center right if you want to put something in here or you this is a great gear hauler yeah, you can just get these right out of the way so could you fit i know you're a motorcycle rider could you fit your bike in here if you took the two out 
I could put my bike in here if I took the two out. The only thing that we would have to do is obviously he didn't set up for that, so I'm just I'm just like, you know, like space wise I was space asking. Space wise, no problem. Yeah. You could weasel it in there. The only thing that'd be tough right now is obviously tying it down with the heated floor. <laughs> yeah. like, don't be giving him any ideas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, there's no way you're drilling into that floor with, no. um, I'm, I don't know how much, like 120, 140 feet of pipe. Yeah, you, you know, it gets the anxiety. Uh, yeah. About that a little bit, so. <laughs> I just realized that, yeah, there's no way you're bolting one of those, those bad Larrys down. Well, either way, it's still cool. The thought is, though, is like may at some point end up, you know, a customer may want one of those trays in here. And I think that would be a kind of a perfect opportunity for this thing too. one of the sliding trays out the back to really utilize this whole area without having to crawl in there. Like a bike tray? Like no, a, not just, much of a motorcycle. Big, but like... It's just a big sliding tray, not for a bike, just a, that he can slide Any out the kind back of tra- and okay. put your stuff in and just slide it in. That's a pretty good idea. Stuff, yeah, so yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's actually not a bad idea at all. So, of but, course. And I could figure that out, but that's the only thing I think I'd want to put into this floor. <laughs> you could figure anything out. The, the mattress is all obviously all all together the way that it's the way yep. that it's like. And we you know. just had some custom custom made mattresses for us to fit, and of course we used the interweave to kind of match the walls and everything. So. And uh, it's actually comfortable. Yeah, I feel I, feel, I, feel I, I like it's it's a holy. <laughs> why is that so heavy? It's dude? some good foam. Why is it so heavy? It's, it's, uh, it's like, like a gel memory yeah. gel latex. It's really nice. Because like I see that it's like four inches, right? Yeah. But like, and you're like, oh, people are like, oh, four inches. But no, this thing is like, it's that's a, heavier it's than my like. It's a dual zone type thing. Eight inch mattress, man. Huh? And there is your ceiling fan, by the way. So that was there that we can't see from the outside. Your entire power system and your water system is accessible from the back, if I'm not mm-hmm. corrected. You want to go back there and yeah, we can show that out. bad Larry off? You did something really crazy with this water system. We did something really crazy with the water system. He wanted a lot of water. A lot of water. So accessible. And I heard word on the street is everything in here is module. So each, like this frame right here, yep. is held in with two bolts on the L-Track. So we can take this whole thing apart very 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 quick so if you needed to get to something if you need to maintenance you're, something you're gonna work on it you're gonna make it you know it's like it's just gonna happen oh there's all the goodies so either start on either side and tell me what we're looking at here because there's a lot of moving parts there's here a lot of stuff and things in here this is crazy because we like we were in, we were in something so simple and clean so simple and now and there's all this so, crap it's so simple it really all is right. it seems <laughs> complicated it's not it's not he didn't he was planning to take this possibly to where there would be situations where the water would not be clean. So we had to set up a way that if he was hooked to a garden hose, he was knowing that all the water going into these two tanks, because there's a 20 gallon tank here and we built a custom 30 gallon tank that goes into the spare tire location, which I'll show you in a minute. Of course you did, why wouldn't you not? So <laughs> so we, we've set it up to where as it comes in, it comes through two, two pre-filters. Yeah. After that, it goes to a UV filter. This is the switch for that. A UV filter, so it's like, like oh, so it's it. cleaning. It's about this this long and it's a big metal pipe in there and there's a, a uv light let me see if we can get a UV. good shot of that guys i don't know if we can or not but we'll, we'll and then after that it fills up the top tank as soon as the top tank is full close that bad lad off and then it fills the bottom tank so, okay so essentially we use this as the main tank the bottom's the slave tank i've got a separate pump down below okay that's taking the water from the bottom tank to the top tank that's all that does yep and then the other because uh, i did see you have two, two or th- two pumps you have uh-huh. two pumps that obviously operate one one pump, the other one goes to the sink. And one kicks it out. That's crazy. So how many gallons total? I know you said it, but I, I was so intrigued. 20 gallon tank up top, over yep. the wheel well, 30 gallon tank down below, four gallons of hot water. So 20, 50, 50, 54. 54, gallons, 54, of 54 gallons of water. 54 gallons of water. So you can do 50 and four gallons of hot. Damn, with a 130 liter fridge and a separate yeah. fr- freezer. And, and it sits, Looking at the van, you wouldn't think there's 55 gallons of water in here. No, sure. no, no, no. It's super clean. It's like stealthy on the outside. And that's, that's cool. and that's your 400 amp hour lithium battery right there. That this big this big guy right here. Yeah. And so this is kind of the cool thing we did with the power system. We actually tapped this frame and built another chassis that the battery and the inverter and everything sits on. So literally, I can take this off. I can swing this thing out. I can unbolt this. The whole power system stays in the van, and the frames come out. What? Yeah. So wait a minute. I just want to clarify here. Unbolt like this, right? Right here. And you can slide it this way? Yep. And then I unbolt this, 
and literally every single wire stays right here and the whole frame comes out for servicing for servicing yep. for people like yourself that have to you know not like I just work I'm on electrical plan on working it's gonna you're gonna work on it you know yeah because we drive these things through earthquakes every day every day and this is part of the van life tech system mm -hmm. the hot water as well as the radiant floor heating as well as holy christmas it all goes back there and it's crazy amount that is ridiculous there's some stuff and things in there too and i you know there's obviously some opportunities to try to build something i'd like to along the way it's like an extra storage in here because of how much we ended up with for space wise yeah was that planned or um no the height kind of changed and stuff and then once everything was kind of where it was you know now we got to figure out what to do with that but that's definitely something that's kind of on our list is is either obviously skis or something wouldn't fit there but finding some way to to make some storage off that track interesting interesting i got some ideas i'll throw hidden, at you hidden storage too that's a I mean. yeah yeah we could do a little uh like rfd card or whatever like and like like something pop out so yeah now you're getting fancy <laughs> yeah, I, well that's my name baby i'm I like fancy it. i absolutely love it i think it's phenomenal so we're talking 54 gallons of water you got clean water you got plenty of fridge you got able to cook you have storage and you can even add more storage if you wanted to add more of these. Pop another one on the other side. Get more on the other side. Plenty of power. USBs and like, bubbles yeah. everywhere. You could charge it by just running your engine for a half an hour. I mean, what are we missing here, man? There ain't uh, much. I mean, Shore power you, you plug really underneath. That, yeah, oh, and that's one thing that I do too. If you look down here. Okay, where, where I put, you're gonna get me dirty. I also know somebody that has it that way. I kind of put them on the inside so that way nobody can see them and they're, they're hidden. nice and hidden. But this is... Oh, so you built an aluminum frame for this guy. Yeah, so it's got a 3 16th aluminum skid plate. Yeah. And it, it bolts into every location that the tire would have when it came out. So it's utilizing the same huge 19 millimeter bolts that go down that hold the tire up. Well, where's the other tire? I mean, I already know. Well, I think we saw it when we opened the doors. It would not fit anymore. Do so you have to build a custom rack for it too? No, he, he actually already had that spare tire carrier. Oh, he did? He had to figure out how to space things out a little bit because the tire grew. So we just modified that one a little bit to work. That is really, really, really well done, Jay. I'm, I'm impressed. Johan's gonna get a good van. Word on the street is he's considering selling. Word on the street is it is going to be for sale. In fact, he's doing a website and everything for it right now. So there'll, uh, there'll actually be a, a website dedicated for this van. Well, once uh, he does officially list, I will put it in the description below. So you guys can see that listing, uh, the website and everything. And once Jason sends that to me, it'll be in the description below, whether it's Right away or two weeks from now, it'll be there eventually, right? Yeah. Well, before the train kind of interrupts oh, us. No. So we're getting interrupted by the train because that's what happens here. I'm gonna let these guys go back to work. I'm gonna have the train here interrupt here me. Comes. <laughs> Are you guys now stuck here? Uh, no, he'll go back, so we can we can weasel out of here pretty quick. Well, you got an off-road machine. Oh yeah, we can. You can just take off-road. <laughs> race the train. Yeah, ah. man. All right, guys. I will see you guys next time. Uh, check out Jason at Off Grid Solutions PDX. That's it. Everything across the board, a DIYer's dream. Seriously, if you guys have some DIY quick things that you need, seriously hit them up. Off Grid Solutions at Gmail, oh, excuse me, Off Grid Solutions PDX at gmail.com. Don't forget the PDX has that little power step. I don't know if my camera got that in there or not. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Later. See ya.